welcome to the Studying Brew episode 810 for this amazing Wednesday. Southern California, we got rain all day. Well, at least I got rain all day. Crazy, right? But thunder, lightning, it was like, oh my gosh, there was a weather change today. <laughs> but it was awesome, and I hope you guys stayed safe out there. Guys, welcome! It's hard hitting Wednesday, and I took a question that was sent to me in a private message. So we are going to break down bonds. See, everybody's favorite is options, but their second favorite is bonds. And guys, bonds is on every bonds are <laughs> bonds are on every test. So we gotta make sure we have it locked down because it, you guys will see it. So we definitely have to make sure it's locked down. So we are gonna use that question and we are going to catapult into the world of bond yields. Guys, I hope you had an amazing day. Let's get started. Let's get started. It was crazy. I hope you guys had no more rain. No more rain tomorrow. No more rain tomorrow. No more rain for the rest of the um, week, at least that I can tell. So let's go. All right. Now, guys, welcome to as what Andy calls our 30 minutes of free. That's right. Our 30 minutes of free, guys, because you guys got to sit through our commercial. Right. And so just want you guys to know, look, we have we are finishing wrapping up are what we call our day one videos, right? That's going to be wrapped up tomorrow. Members, we have a on Friday morning at 11 a.m. Pacific, we are going to have an all members test taking techniques, guys, because that's what we're going to be focusing on through the rest of the year. We really want to focus on keyword content and getting those techniques locked. Guys, what we do on the studying brew, take a little bit deeper into for our member sessions. And that's exactly what we're going to be focusing on for the rest of the year, because we are gearing up for what we are calling Kona Academy starting in January, guys, we are going to basically try to do one test a month. That's right. One test a month, not me doing one test a month. I'm going to try to be doing five exams, but you guys are going to try to do one test a month. Ooh, it's going to be amazing. But right now, guys, we have our live sessions, right? We're going to go back starting next week. We're going to go back to our question and answer format, right? We're going to maybe talk about a topic, but the idea is that we are really going to utilize that free free, free, free message board where we are going to just pull questions from there, pull topics from there, go back to the, the tried and true, right? Talk about techniques, talk about keywords. We have on-demand courses right now. We have um, our 21 day plans. We have everything. We have an orientation video that explains kind of where we're at right now, right? <laughs> um, we have study guides that are available. They're $20 each. They are principal. And you guys are going to see that the the, the SIE looks like, man, this one looks so much different than the other three. It does, but oh my gosh, I was going through it today just to double check. It's still so relevant. It still has not changed. FINRA has not changed the test in years. Crazy, right? So all of that stuff is still valid. It's still good to go. We have course notes for the 26, right? Don't forget our free community. We have our Instagram. We have our link tree that you guys can connect to everything. Guys, the best way to get a hold of Andy right now is either through the Instagram or through our Telegram. You guys can call the 1-800 number. I'm sorry, the one, the 866 number, but he still can't text out. We are working on getting that solved when he comes back into town. And that way he could text out again. We might be changing our number. No, correction. We will be changing our number, right? But guys, the best way, especially if you want to text back, our Patreon, uh, Telegram, Instagram. I think he said, oh, and of course the Discord, right? Of course the Discord. I'm on the Discord as well. And that is our cute little dog, Kona. That's him right there. If you guys ever wanted to know why we named our business Kona after Kona, it's not because of the islands. No, it's because of that cutie little thing right there. All right, guys, we have a special Thursday going on tomorrow. Yes, we have a bonus SIE. So we are going to hit the series six um, at 8 a.m. in Hawaii, 10 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Mountain, 12 noon in Central and 1 p.m. on the East. We are talking about complaints and disputes. We are basically wrapping up that last area for the series six. Then we have a bonus 
hour. That's right, bonus hour for the SIE starting at 10 a.m. in Hawaii, noon Pacific, 1 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Central, and 3 p.m. In the, in the East. We are going to do all the prohibited activities. Everything bad, we're talking about tomorrow, right? Everything bad, insider trading, pro, um, all the market manipulation stuff, restricted persons, anything bad. We're going to be talking about that tomorrow at that hour. Then we're going to take an hour break and then we're going to come back at noon um, Hawaii, 2 p.m. Pacific, 13 p.m. No, I'm just kidding. 3 p.m. Mountain, <laughs> 4 p.m. Central and 5 p.m. Eastern. And we are going to wrap up what is area four or basically registration and, and, and associated person conduct. So we are going to do that. Now, guys, if you are not following us on Instagram, right? If you are not following us on Instagram, guess what we did today? We added another member to the Kona Hall of Fame. Guys, we got a passer, right? We got a passer. It's awesome, guys. And it was Quentin Moore. Guys, Q has been a member with Kona since the very beginning. He's in the Army Reserve, so there's been times where he had to take time off. He actually moved I was going to say across the United States, but um, midway, <laughs> he moved to the mid-coast. <laughs> Halfway through his studying, guys, he became fully licensed today. Great job, Q. He um, he told me, you know, I, I know, but just from working with him, you know, guys, test-taking techniques really helped him. Getting He is, you know how we talk about people who memorize Q banks, um, not on purpose, but just because that's how their brain works. Q was the first person that I knew that can memorize a Q bank. Isn't that crazy, guys? So and you would think that that would be a benefit. It wasn't. And we had to really break through and we had to come up with some really creative ways to get him to not memorize questions, but memorize keywords and really kind of focus on those techniques. So congratulations, Q. You did it. You're fully licensed. He is going to work on getting his production. He's in Primerica. He's going to be working on getting that production so he can get all his bonuses at the end of the year. And again, Q, we are not done yet. We are going to see you for that 26. Woo -woo! Right? Awesome. All right, guys. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready for hard hitting Wednesday? Look, like I said, we are going to talk about bonds. Now, for me, options, not my favorite. Bonds were a very close second, okay? But what I did, things didn't make sense to me when I was studying bonds. What, coupons never change, but you talk about inter interest rates never change, but yet you talk about changing interest rates. What the heck? And why do we do everything on the seesaw? Like, what the heck? Like the teeter-totter. What is, I don't even understand that. I don't get it, right? but I had a breakthrough one day and I was like, as long as I know how to plug it in, as long as I know the concept of a seesaw, right? One is down, one is up, right? And it keeps just going like this. Things started making a lot more sense. And I was like, all right, if I can plug it in, it works. And that is exactly what we're gonna do tonight. So we are gonna use a question that, like I said, was sent to me and we're gonna use that as our, launching point to talk about this idea of bond coupons changing but not changing right okay so as we look at these answers we see 7.5 6.5 8.2 and 7.1 one of the things that stands out to me is that that has a seven and that has a seven right 6.5 is the lowest 8.2 is the highest Right now, obviously, guys, we are going to ignore the fact that we know the answer is D. But can't you tell right away on the screen? Can't you see right away on the screen that the technique of two that are similar, 7.5 and 7.1, is, is an answer choice? Isn't that crazy? And I was telling people today in um, one of the live sessions, <laughs> one of the many live sessions today, I was telling them that... Um, I was like, you know, what I've noticed about Kaplan, it's usually the middle answer. When you're looking at a set of numbers, for some reason, it's usually one of the middle answers. And look at 7.1 is in the middle, right? Crazy. So let's go look at the question and figure out why the answer is 7.1. So it says, the current yield 
on a bond with a coupon of 7.5. So the coupon is 7.5, right? That goes into the triangle, is currently selling at 105 and a half. So what the question is asking is what is the current yield? Okay. Now look at, there's like all these numbers right here. What the heck? I'm just going to ignore all that. Okay. So I'm going to use the bond seesaw. I'm not going to explain it. I'm just going to plug it in. Okay. So, but I already know that the coupon goes into the triangle and I'm going to try to draw the, that. Nope. Hold on. I'm going to try to draw it like that. There we go. Yeah, that's close enough. Right. You guys recognize this, right? And then we know, uh, why, M C A. <laughs> I remembered, right? Y M C A. I remembered. Y M C A. I remember. So that's the best way to know that, right? And then I know that dollar sign goes over here, percentage goes over here. This is the thing where I'm like on par. So that means like everything's equal. Okay. So, but what this also means, guys, is that the 7.5 is in the triangle. Let's just bring it up to this line right here, okay? Because everything on this line, that's all 7.5 right there, okay? So now it says that the bond is selling at 105. Golden rule, if it doesn't have a dollar sign, we could add a dollar sign and add a zero. I'm ignoring the half for now, okay? Or I simply just look and if there's no dollar sign, and it's higher than 100, we're still putting it up here. Okay, so we're still putting it up here. I can either put 105 and a half, or I could put 10, like 1050, right? Either way. So now my bar is this bar right here. So check this out. Because that's the bar that I'm gonna be working with, that means that my current yield has to be lower. That means it can't be equal and it can't be higher. So now I have 6.5 and 7.1, because this is what I'm looking at right here. That's what I'm trying to find right there. Now, let me ask you this question. Is $50 a huge difference or a small difference from a thousand? Is it a huge difference or a small difference from a thousand. If I'm looking at par value being a thousand dollars, is fifty dollars a huge difference or a small difference? You guys can answer in the chat if you want. Do, 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 do. It's a small difference, right? Small, very small difference. So that means that that number right here, this number right there is not going to be a big different number. That means it's going to be pretty darn close to my coupon. And that is why not doing any math, we know that the answer is 7.1. It's barely a, that's it. It's barely a, so if my dollar is up, my percentage has to be down. Guys, I didn't understand what current yield meant. I didn't understand what yield to maturity meant. I had no idea what yield to call meant. I just knew that if my dollar was up, my percentage was down. And the other thing I knew is that $50 was not a big, it's just a, it's just, you can't, you probably couldn't even feel it. It was like, it was like, it would be like if a fly landed on the other side of the seesaw. So we're not going to see a big difference. We're only going to see a tiny difference. Now, the math behind this, because yeah, I know some of you want to know the math. The math is where we take our coupon and we divide it by our current price. Or as we can say, maybe current market value, right? So our coupon was 7.5% and our price was 105 and a half. Now, somebody one time did this number. They just divided it. Oh, no, we divide. Yields are divides, right? So we will, I think they did it 7.5 divided by 105.5. <laughs> so guys, this is how I did this. Like just right now on my calculator, I just did 7.5 and I divided it by 105.5. And I get 
0-7-1-0-9. Now, if this is all you can remember, guys, if this is all you can remember, check it out. 7-1. Don't we have that answer choice right there? Isn't that crazy? So you didn't even have to figure out. Well, if I see 7.5%, that's actually $75 a year. If I see 105 and a half, add a dollar sign, add a zero. In this case, it's like 105.5, add a zero, right? We didn't even have to do that. $75 divided by this will equal the same number. Does that make sense? So guys, I showed you how to answer this question. No math. And I showed you guys how to answer this question with math. Now, let me get to the point that somebody asked me. I thought you said coupons never change. How come 7.1 is a change? Can I honestly tell you guys this? I was confused myself. This concept to me was so confusing. So then I had to remember this. Is it true that when you take out a loan or a credit card, does your interest rate ever change? Does your interest rate on a debt, I'm just going to call it a debt, right? So whether it's your credit card, whether it's your car, whether it's a house, whether it's a personal loan, does your interest rate on a debt change? We just heard in the news, right? That interest rates have been changing since 2022, right? Right? We've heard interest rates are um, going up, right? since 2022, right? 2022, yeah. But did your interest rate on your car loan change? Did the interest rate of your loan on your home change? Did your credit card interest rate change? We've been seeing that interest rates have been going up for the last two years, but did yours change? No, the answer is no. In fact, when we go, oh, I got a new interest rate on my house. Guess what we did? We refinanced, right? We refinanced, we got a new loan and the new loan has a different rate. What does that sound like in studying? Hmm. Callable bonds, maybe? Callable bonds. The issuer gets a new bond. They call these bonds back, right? Same thing. So your interest rate doesn't change. Same thing with an out. Now I'm going to use their language. Same thing with an outstanding bond. Outstanding bonds. Their coupons never change. So, hey, 65 and 66ers, you know, when we talk about the treasury inflation protection securities, the ones that adjust for inflation, those coupons never change either. So how do they adjust for inflation? The principal changes. So on our tips, 65 and 66, Coupons still don't change, but the principal does. See what I mean, guys? So even on ones that are supposed to keep pace with inflation, even those coupons don't change. So when we talk about interest rates changing, these ones right here, when we talk about those interest rates changing, this is what we call the secondary interest rate. Or in layman's terms, it's the new interest rate. So if you were to refinance, if you were to get a new bond, you will get this rate. When you guys are on the 65 and 66, it's called the discount rate. 
It's the rate in the market. Ooh, that's the other one. The market rate. It's the rate in the market. Now, let me explain, because I got the time, so I might as well. Let me explain why the seesaw is the way it is. Have you guys heard of this term called inflation, um, inverse, like they have an inverse relationship? So they have an inverse relationship, which means if one goes up, the other goes down, right? If one goes down, the other side goes up. And the reason is this, let's just use an example. Let's use an example of our 7.5% bond, right? I mean, that's a pretty high bond. I'll be real. That's a pretty high bond. But let's say, let's say that, and this is my, it's my triangle, right? Let's say that interest rates are up. Okay. So let's say interest rates go up in the secondary market. And now you can get a new bond, let's say at 9%. Okay. So let's just say interest rates in the secondary market are 9%. How attractive is your $75 a year? You can get a brand new bond to get 90, or you could drive this old one, drive this old one. Cause I always think of cars or you can have this old one and get 75. Hmm. The value drops because guys, we trade bonds based on this coupon. That's why we trade the bonds because we want the coupon. We want that interest, right? Bonds used for income. So these are less attractive. So because my 7.5% bond is less attractive, its value is going to drop. This is this. This is that line down there. That means that this is going to be sold at a discount, right? And then that is my 7.5%. Okay. Now, new example, 7.5. I'm going to keep that as my, my example, but let's say interest rates are dropping. Let's say it's getting closer to like, I don't know, like the pandemic, right? Where interest rates were dropping. So now let's say a new bond Let's say we can get 4%. That's only $40 a year. How attractive is my 7.5 now? 75 versus 40, 75 versus 40. I don't know about you guys, but I want that 75. Heck yeah, man. So guess what? I can sell my 7.5. This is on my 7.5. This is on my 7.5. I can sell my 7.5 for a premium now because a new bond at 40 or my bonds at 75. That is the bond seesaw. That is the way it works. Now, guys, I had one of these epiphany moments one time. It wasn't until after I passed my six, it wasn't until, um, I think I was studying my 65 and I had this shower thought and I was like, okay, if I go to Target, right? Target's like my favorite store. Well, it used to be, <laughs> I don't go to Target very often anymore, but let's just say I go to Target and let's say I'm going to go to Target with a hundred dollars. Okay. Now, Target is my my base. Target is my par value. So every time I go to Target and I spend $100, this is probably pre-inflation. Every time I go to Target and I spend $100, I get seven items. Okay. So that's my, that's my, my par. That's my, like what I base everything on. Too expensive, too cheap. I don't know. I know I spend $100 at Target and I get seven items. But let's say I go to Ross, TJ Maxx, Marshalls. I think those are the only stores I can think of right now, right? And I'm going to go spend $100 at one of those stores. I'm going to go to Ross and I'm going to spend $100. Well, now I can get 10 items, right? 
because Ross, isn't Ross considered a discount store? It's considered a discount store, right? So can't you say that I yield more? I get more. I paid less. I get more when I buy things at a discount, right? But now let's say, man, I used to use Nordstrom's as my example. What can I use now? Let's say I go to Macy's. No, that's not, that's not premium enough. Let's go to Saks Fifth Avenue, right? I'm going to go take a hundred dollars and I'm going to go to Saks Fifth Avenue, right? I'm going to go to Saks. And I take my hundred dollars and I get one sock. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even get a pair. I don't even get a pair of socks. I get one sock. I'm lucky if I can get one sock, right? Now, wouldn't Saks Fifth Avenue be considered a premium store? Don't I yield less the more I pay? Don't I yield less the more I pay? And guys, that was my shower thought. My shower thought was, oh my goodness, this is why things work the way they work. And then if we factor in the yield to the current yield, yield to maturity, yield to call, you just put it on the slide. You just put it on the seesaw. And then you guys have to remember that this is constantly moving. It is a working teeter-totter or a seesaw for as long as that bond exists. So if you have a 30-year bond, you've got the dollar sign sitting over here. You got the percentage sign sitting over here and they're sitting on this seesaw for 30 years. Yep. 30 years. The You can even think of it this way. <laughs> so I'm going to show you guys one more example and then we'll call it, right? So we already talked about our seesaw. Well, okay. And then let's say we've got dollar sign, right? He goes to the park and then his friend percentage sign goes to the park, right? Well, percentage man, he always forgets to wear his sunscreen. He always forgets his sunscreen. So he has to go under the trees because he's, like I said, he's always forgets his sunscreen. So he's always under the trees and we're going to name these trees because it's a nice uh, orchard. We're going to name these trees, the current yield tree, the yield to maturity tree and the yield to call tree. Now in the yield to maturity tree, we have a little bluebird. That's a bluebird. I'm going to label it bluebird because my art artistry skills are not very good. Right? It's a bluebird. Why does the bluebird belong in the yield to maturity tree? Because this is also called basis. If you guys ever seen like, oh, a municipal bond is quoted out of 5.4 basis. They're talking about that yield to maturity. And then again, as we know, guys, it goes up and down, up and down. And there is our seesaw. Oh, oh, there. Let me put our triangle in the middle. And there is our seesaw. We call this our coop. There you guys go. That's it. Now, somebody put in the chat, and I'm going to say it out loud. Uh, I mapped this out on my SIE, and it worked so well. Guys, I didn't understand any of this concept. I just plugged it in. $90 goes down here. $105 goes up there. I mean, I'm sorry, $105, $90. Um, $890 goes down there. Uh, $1,200 goes up there. That's all I did. And then of course, par value is a thousand dollars or a hundred quoted. That's it. That's it. That's all I did. Just work the seesaw, plug it in. Don't fight it. 
dollar sign down, percentages are up. Percentage up, dollars down. That's it. So guys, I hope that was helpful for you guys. I hope you apply the bond seesaw to any time you guys see the word yield. Anytime you're talking about anything like this, about preferred stocks and bonds, I hope you guys remember to draw this thing out. Trust me when I say it makes life so much easier. And on that note, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed tonight. I will see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow is the Series 6. We are going to have six questions from six different exams. We are going to do test-taking techniques. We're going to do keywords. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Have an amazing evening, guys. Take care.